Hello everyone, Insane Frame here. Welcome to another video. In today's video, we're going to go back to the Fallout verse, specifically New Vegas. And today we're going to go ahead and ask the question, can you beat Fallout New Vegas with Glory? Now, Glory is a very good melee weapon and a fantastic weapon if we could obtain it easily. The problem here is that we're going to need to do Lonesome Road DLC and acquire the weapon from Ulysses himself. So this is going to be a very tough challenge indeed. So we'll have to get every advantage we can get our hands on the weapon and then it's just plain sailing but that's much easier said than done as for old glory the weapon has bonus crit damage bonus crit chance which is always powerful in new vegas but it's coupe de grasse is the special grand slam attack that does 200 percent damage in vats at the cost of some action points so this weapon can pretty much do it all also some of you may not believe this but i've never played lonesome road but i have done some research into it and what it entails and i can safely say this this is going to be a rough ride, but I'm sure it's certainly possible, but let's quickly go over the rules. We can only use Old Glory as a weapon in battle. No glitz or exploits, no cheating or modding, and we're going to be playing on very hard difficulty with Hardcore enabled. So with all of that, let us begin. We start on up with Doc Mitchell as always and we decide to create our character. So we go ahead and begin character creation by naming ourselves the infamous Law Limburger. If any of you know this reference, comment down below. I'd be very impressed if any of you remember. All our items go inside a box, so we start with no advantage from the DLCs, including the trusty canteen. I'll miss you, buddy. So for our stats, we get rid of charisma, but pump all our points into luck and intelligence. We're going to need caps and the casino doors are open for us, so a beeline there. After character creation, there's a lot of items we can get that will help us out. And also we need decent strength to wield old glory if we can get it. The perception and agility will help us sneak around to avoid detection, so lots going on, but we need to be prepared for Lonesome Road. For our skills, we can tag up to three skills and this raises our score by 15 points, so we decide to go for science, repair and sneak. This is extremely important for us as this will allow us to have access to Lonesome Road. However, we do need to gather what we can in the main hub. Lastly, we have traits. Think of these as trade-offs for your character to specialise your character even further. The beauty here is it's kind of a take it or leave it sort of deal, but we can select it to two traits. There's only really one option that we want and that's good natured. Not a characteristic of Law Limburger, but for the plus five to non-combat skills and minus five to all combat skills it works now favor with very little downside so we go ahead and take it once our examination is done we go to the chemistry set to make a handful of stimpex as well as repair the nine millimeter submachine gun we aren't the most honorable as we steal all of doc mitchell's stuff that's of use to us kind of ironic that we pick good natured here and we resort to stealing five minutes after but hey it's the wasteland and we'll take what we can get we also enable hardcore mode and crack on with our journey now we're released into the big wide world we decide to get some items from sunny smiles that is in her house including a chinese special ops book that gives us free sneak we then make a stop to the Good Spring Cemetery to acquire the snow globe, which will kickstart our caps from the get-go. The NCR Correctional Facility is in the distance, and we decide to go into the Hidden Valley and see some scorpions. Hello, fellow scorpions. We decide to go ahead and see the crater, and they greet us in an interesting manner. And after our delightful conversation, we sneak on by the mutants and see a dead NCR soldier. So we peel for the armor to use for ourselves, and shortly after, we avoid the boulder and then buy some purified waters. We'll need a lot of water for Lonesome Road. Shortly after, we take a spin round the Atomic Wrangler and start gambling, and after getting 100 chips, it's the same old story as we walk away with over 5,000 caps thanks to Blackjack, and also a level up as we've met an achievement. We spec into science, repair and sneak, getting them to decent numbers, so we get 50 repair, 40 sneak and science, so things are going very well. And as for our perk, we go for intense training and put a point into endurance. So we have six endurance now, helping our health gains on future level ups. We use our winnings to go into the New Vegas Strip and then decide to go to Victor, who lets us in. We get to meet Mr. House and all we want here is the second snow globe. So we go to the cocktail lounge, grab the snow globe and we find 
behind it and we hand both snow globes into Jay and she gives us an extra 4,000 caps, a excellent startup fund. We immediately go to the New Vegas clinic and decide to get two implants giving us plus one endurance and plus one intelligence, the most important stats for us this early on for 8,000 caps. And since we're in New Vegas strip we might as well go to the Ultralux casino and start cleaning them out. We play more blackjack and we start out with 100 caps and we see where that goes which eventually nets us over 15,000 caps. We get a luck, strength and agility implant each giving us plus one in their respective stats and we also go for the subdermal implant that gives us plus four armor. So we're doing pretty good for level two but we still need some supplies and a few level ups for hitting the road. We go to the gun runners and purchase some reinforced mark two armor so we get ourselves outfitted looking very smart and dapper and now it's time to get our last piece of the puzzle which is going to the tops casino. So we go ahead and meet the greeter he's quite the charming fellow and he's still in one piece and when our conversation concludes we go and see Benny which gives us a huge amount of experience. So we level up twice right off the bat so we use our level up to pump points into science and when that's done our next level up we also go for more science and sneak so we have 75 signs as well as almost 50 sneak which is exactly what's going to keep us alive. We also grab the perk educated so we get an extra two skill points per level up letting us mid max where possible. We go ahead and start journeying down onto Prim and when we get there we stick to the hillside and we eventually get to the bus which is the entrance to Lonesome Road and we get a little bit of a prompt and it says we need to be level 25 plus ideally but that's not happening and when we enter it is an absolute hellscape of signs to come. So we go ahead and enter the missile silo to start our first trial in this gauntlet. When we go into the bunker there's profanity on the wall with some good advice but we're here to claim a weapon of all things and after scouting around we managed to get to an iRobot named Eddie that responds with beeps and boots and it's actually quite adorable. Eddie also unlocks the commissary and we trade out all of our armor to upgrade to riot armor which also gives us sneak sight which allows us to see the world slightly more red I guess. It's quite a cool effect so why not. We do look like an absolute badass in this armor so rule of cool and it's helping out. We go ahead and hack a turret that helps us to gun down a sentry bot for about five seconds for it's absolutely blown to smithereens and the sentry bot starts attacking us. Thankfully our high endurance and decent armor lets us run away and lock the door behind us to get to the terminal and hack it to stop more sentry bots from deploying. Pretty much the sole reason we wanted 75 science to begin with. We also run away from the sentry bot and we wait until Eddie spawns so we can just leg it out of the area. We don't look back, we just run to the door to avoid any fighting as we're just simply outclassed and we get blown to smithereens which is going to be a very common occurrence here. However, once we're outside, Ulysses has a lot of things to say through Eddie and the voice actor of Ulysses is simply amazing. I mean, just listen to him. When that cryptic exchange is done, we level up and we decide to go for repair and sneak so we can maintain our armor a little bit better whilst remaining under the radars. All we can do in combat is sneak and run away, so stealth's our best friend here. But for now, we explore around Goodville, which is actually a death trap and not as nice as it sounds. We do die a heck of a lot here whilst we're here, but through trial and error, we managed to go around the back of the marked security men building and climb through the rubble to get to a small clearing. Once a guy with a red glare rocket launcher kills us about half a dozen times, we just leg it up the rubble and take the laser detonator so we can start detonating the warheads to progress forward. However, unbeknownst to me, it triggers an ambush and these guys sure are persistent. So what I decide to do is double back to the entrance to avoid them. Their high perception is a pain in the ass but we do eventually lose them as they are tough customers. However, we use the laser detonator to get through the rubble and this took quite a few attempts as the enemies are very good at killing us so after a few attempts I simply took any items that would help our survival as there's a second warhead we need to detonate and using the oil barrel it shields us from machine gun fire and with the way being clear we progress to the next area which is the tunnels and this doesn't sound good so we'll wait and see but once in a death claw dies in the distance and we see a single tunneler. Not 
not even going to square up to these guys, but we do see Eddie pick a fight with a marked man. And because he fought him, he's aggroed, so we hide. And since he doesn't really help, we just run as we'll die anyway. And we run around. It's not actually that bad in the tunnel, so we just keep running. And we immediately get to the next area. And Ulysses has another exchange for us yet again. Still, Ulysses has an extremely cool voice, so we press on, but first we level up and we dump all of our points into speech, as we'll require this later, as many of you probably already know why, but I don't wish to get all six audio logs. But also, we grab toughness, raising our armor so we're harder to kill. Always good to have no matter the build. Eddie is awesome, but it's straight back into combat and out healing the damage coming our way, whilst using the laser detonator to clear the way. Thankfully, the blast actually kills a ghoul and we hide successfully for once. So I immediately take the game's advice and go home to the mainland to resupply and sell our loot. We have a quick bit of respite as we get patched up by Doc Mitchell and then we go to the New Vegas Medical Clinic to top up on some healing items. And before I set off, I decide to grab some experience by doing the Powder Kettinger's quest line. As we don't need to do any biting, we just need to pass a couple of speech checks. So with 30 speech, Shafaz is told to move on and he does. Then we use our high special stats to tell a trader he isn't what he seems and he comes clean with us. And then we report back and we're sent to Prim. There's a couple of scallywags who shoot us and we decide our armor can take the hits and walk inside the casino. John Nash spills the beans that the NCR wish to raid the prison. And we make our way back and tell Eddie, and since we've got our XP from the quest, we level up and we put all of our points into speech. I was also getting the heck out of there as we still can't attack, but we are level 7, so things are looking pretty good. And after a quick resupply, is back to the hellscape of the divide. Back at the highway, the enemy go one vs one against Eddie, so we leave them to it. And we also go ahead and go to a collapsed building as there's a body. We climb the wreckage and get to the top and we manage to get to the corpse which has advanced riot gear. The difference is it gives more endurance instead of agility and the helmet gives an additional plus one perception. So really good stats for us. We also find a logbook from Ulysses. I didn't think I'd find one, but there we go. I got one after all, I guess. Also, Eddie manages to slowly but surely kill an enemy for us which is pretty hilarious as they had a shoulder mounted machine gun so eddie is a generous boy and unlocks the commissary for us so we can start selling things and we gain a lot of caps from it so what's not to love but now we have to deal with a death claw so like before we just go for lots of healing items to negate the damage and run for it when we make it past the death claw we get a little bit into an enclave and we leave it be and that is until it decides to start biting the enemies that we pulled and it manages to kill one of them and sets lots of satchel charges off clearing the way however there's still one enemy but we sneak past and decide to instead launch a missile into the skies for whatever reason probably the story or the main plot or something but anywho since the launch is happening and the rocket is out there somewhere now it has exploded but we level up and we put all points into speech yell again getting six to five speech not bad as for our perk we go for stonewall so we get plus five armor against melee and arm armed attacks and also get immunity to being knocked down in melee a excellent combat perk for us after we level up the game gives us a prompt about a new area that's very dangerous called the courier mile it might be nice to get a weapon first before we try that but um meanwhile eddie is doing what he can against an enemy and we can't really do anything but watch and it does take a few moments i made a cup of yorkshire tea hashtag not sponsored but damn we can try maybe one day but anyway once this roughing has been dealt with i feel like we're coming to an end of this dlc and we still haven't got the required speech needed so we've got a few options here as we can go do some quests in the mainland so that's exactly what we're going to do as we can't screw this next part up so first things first we have enough sight to hack both terminals to get into Mr. House's personal mainframe and then we get a second terminal and we successfully hack it and Mr. House is not impressed as we render him useless outside of his tube. We can use the console to kill him and this gives us a heck of a lot of experience making us up almost to level 9. We get the NCR quest from Ranger Ghost to go to Nipton that makes our mission that little bit easier and we just hoof it there and back and they're legion uh, there and they are present in mass so we go and report our findings to Ranger Ghost which is just free xp i guess 
since we still need more XP, we decide to go to the Boomer base and they decide to lob some artillery shells at us, which is, quite frankly, nothing compared to our experience at the Divide thus far. So this is almost as easy as tea and biscuits. So when the volley is over, we go say hello at the front gate and the man points a rocket at us and we have Requel escort us to Mother Pearl. Mother Pearl then gives us free reign of the base, but we can't do any combat. So we go ahead and meet Pete, the keeper of the story. And since we can ask him pointless questions and pass speech checks, we can gain experience and it just so happens that it's enough experience to be able to get our level up or our level up we put all of our points into speech lovely we go back to the divide and we go through the tunnels and thankfully it's only a sentry bot and we just book it and when we get through the bunker we then get to a staircase with many many tunnels and we just keep moving through so they can't catch us we see the light that is the door and when we emerge ulysses has more dialogue for us to listen to and he's getting more into the blame game at this point which isn't cool ulysses come on now anyway we go on our merry way we detonate more warheads and clear the path as best we can we do much the same thing and run for our very lives a reoccurring theme here and when we reach the next point ulysses decides to be extremely rude and say we're no longer required and takes eddie away from us this simply won't do as he has saved our derriere so shame on you ulysses but i guess it's your package and you've acquired it but we kind of need the payment so we press on and this was a little bit confusing at first as the warhead didn't spawn and there's two death claws in the area and also a firing squad and we don't have eddie so there's no chance of dealing with them but when i get outside the Ra cave which we certainly don't want to because that is a death sentence right there we see the warhead and the death claws running around a lot so with a lot of patience we wait and watch the death claws aggro the firing squad taking out the biggest problem on our doorstep as the death claws both meet their end the second problem is it, whilst not removed is we detonate the warhead to eliminate some of the marked men so at least we can have less bullet holes in us now if nothing else we get into the area before ulysses temple and detonate a couple more warheads to clear a path forwards and remove some enemies it's the only way we can remove them to press forwards and i'll take what i can get at this point as there's a couple of satchel charges these did kill me a couple of times but coming here a few more times i use some medex and just run on through with health and attack the door to the bunker is being guarded by marked men so we just run for it as quickly as possible and get inside. When we're inside, there is a sentry bot and the guy decides to start lobbing rockets at us, making it very difficult to see. But in the panic, we get to a terminal and decide to unlock everything. We go on in and the door to Ulysses Temple is in front of us. We have done it, ladies and gentlemen. We've got through Lonesome Road without attacking. This is quite the feat and certainly something I wasn't 100% sure possible. Our reward for such a feat is that we get a special perk that improves our damage by 10% and also increase our VAT hit chance by 10% as we left Eddie behind. I didn't know this was a thing, but it's an amazing perk, so why not? We're not out the woods yet, though, as we have Ulysses to deal with, but we do get a level up, so we're level 10. We put all of our points in speech, making 99 speech, but for our perk, and since we're level 10, we can get the last perk that we need here, and that is to go for that here and now, immediately boosting us to level 11, so we can get another set of skill points with the perk applied. We get the experience we need and hit level 11, getting 100 speech, and some points into melee weapons, allowing us to confront Ulysses while fighting him he is one of the toughest opponents in the game and since we can't attack we need speech to settle this peacefully or as peace was it can get with ulysses now this conversation actually has many repercussions if done wrong however due to having 100 speech we managed to pass a speech check of 90 quite the challenge indeed and then we have to pass a perfect 100 speech check once that is done, we open up the peaceful option towards Ulysses, and sure enough, he comes to an agreement that two couriers are better than one, and he joins our side. And thank goodness, as my my, there's a lot of enemies, but Ulysses can do all the fighting for us, as he is one heck of a fighter. He has two iBots as well that just run around and gun people down, and to be honest, it's one of the easiest fights as Ulysses is simply just a powerhouse. I mean, just look at the guy. He, he's a supercharged engine smashing into people like an atomic truck. You, you are just awesome, Ulysses. 
You go, you excellent tube of beings, sir. When all the enemies are done, we have to launch the missile, and this can unlock new areas. We decide to launch the missile at the Legion, but spoilers, we won't be going to any of the end game areas because they're end game content with some of the toughest enemies in New Vegas. But we have officially finished Lonesome Road and the cinematic plays making the courier story come full circle. However, the most important thing is we now have a weapon we could use. But before that, we have a single special point we can assign. And we go ahead and put a point in strength, so we have eight strength. Also, we have a lot of goodies. And finally, we have a weapon we can use to attack things. It only took doing the toughest DLC, but it's here in our hands. And the game is going to be a lot easier now. We decide to test this out on a dog, it gets one shot, and some ghouls decide to attack us, but they are literally no match for us as we do shot them as we walk to the NTR outpost. We also beat enough of them to level up to level 12, a nice little surprise. We go ahead and get lots of melee weapons so we can use glory now, and for our perk we decide to get super slam so we have a chance of knocking our opponents down in melee. A very powerful perk, definitely an S tier perk for us. And and our build is online at the perfect time. We arrive at the NCR outpost to sell all of our goodies and times are good now as we are now swimming in caps again and we have some high level gear that the main game simply can't scale effectively to as it's just too powerful. But we can do better ladies and gentlemen. We go back to the divide now that we can attack and super slam with old glory makes it really easy to kill the tunnelers. They are now powerless to stop us. We decide to go to a certain location to go down a sewer pipe and the sewer pipe has a couple of enemies in it but the enemies are flattened like a pancake with a few jolly good swings and we find a small area only to the exit the other sewer pipe and what do you know we find the best riot gear the elite riot gear ladies and gentlemen it's only fitting we take it for our own use it gives a lot of extra stats and it's an amazing bit of kit after our amazing armor has been acquired we decide to go back to the mojave and crack on with the main story now that we are armed to the teeth so we go to our favorite fellow that is swanks at the top casino we pass some speech checks as we are the most charming fellow on the block and he allows us to carry our weapon around and even get a key to Benny's suite to investigate it. Inside we find arguably the most important fellow, Yes Man, a reprogrammed Securitron. Yes Man blurts out the whole plan so we can let Swanks know and then say Benny has to go and my word is this satisfying. It is always funny seeing Benny get throttled around and we obtain the platinum chip in the most hilarious way possible. Yes Man is acquainted with the chip and we decide to meet him at the Lucky Burly Egg so we can have an army at our disposal to do whatever we wish with. The integration to the system is complete and Yes Man has a larger smile than before. We also get to see the Mark II Securitrons in action and rockets do look like fun and the fun times keep on rolling with a level up. Although all we do is pump all our points into melee weapons making us more effective in combat. Lovely stuff. We decide to go and meet the Brotherhood of Steel, they decide to strip us down, a real low point for Law Limburger, and we decide to go out in our underpants and an NCR Ranger confronts us. We do a little bit of tampering with his radio for his treachery and he's a fool and has the thing destroy him outright. A well played trick on our part for sure. We march back to the Elder and acquire our kit in the process and we manage to convince him that we did the right thing. A most excellent result. Next up is the Great Khans and on the way the Vipers are taken care of, a little bit of caps in here and there is always good not that we need it but we do get some xp and when we visit red rock canyon we do the usual as with all our playthroughs and start bashing the cans what can i say they're really good xp in fact so much so that we level up in the process so we get some repair and melee weapons making us more of a badass but the big milestone is our perk we get finesse so we have extra crit and it's the equivalent of five points of luck so crit chances are going to be a plenty now it goes really nicely with our weapon however when the great khans get wiped out we report back to yes man and he is updated on all the tribes so we move on to the next part which is saving the ncr president aaron kimball it's free xp so why not so we go ahead and we trek onto hoover dam and once there we go report to ranger grant to begin the quest but anyone new here, we have to prevent the president from being assassinated and there's three ways it can happen and we need to spot them and defuse them. It's actually quite a little fun quest. So we report to Ranger Grant and he sets us off to make sure everything is good. So the first thing we do is get an engineer jumpsuit and we don it and we decide to pickpocket the engineer and get his failsafe codes. 
We go back to the Vesper to disarm the bomb, and once that has been done, we do the easiest part and see a ranger dead below the tower. So we go up the tower and see an NCR wrongdoer who's actually with the Legion, as he's a Legion marksman. We give him a good whack, which is a pretty much a one shot, one kill, and now we enjoy the speech and Lelic concludes since there are no more threats. The engineer isn't aggroed and doesn't know any better, so all in a day's work. Straight on afterwards, we go to the El Dorado power plant and what's on in, and then walk straight back out after planting the override chip. We don't want to annoy the NCR any more than we have to, so at this stage of the game, we're ready for Hoover Dam, but I believe a couple of levels will really help us out, so we go back to the divide towards Hopeville and start beating the crap out of everyone there. A, for revenge, and B, because it's a lot of fun and just feels awesome to repay the favour to get some XP. We get a lot of experience by beating these guys, they do hurt a lot, but we go back and forth to the auto dock and just keep healing and beating these guys down, using hit and run tactics. We get a lot of experience by beating these guys, they do hurt a lot, but we go back to the auto dock and just keep healing and beating these guys down. It even gets to the point where the tunnelers are beaten as well as allowing us to clear out the first two sections of Lonesome Road. We do hit level 15, no problem and we're close to the next level so we decide to do the age-old trick of going and clearing out the fire ants near Helios 1 to get our final level up. When the ants all lie dead in front of us, we certainly hit level 16 and decide to go for 100 melee weapons and some repair skill. For our perk, we go for adamantium skeleton so our body suffers 50% less limb damage. Combined with our armor, crippled limbs are going to be a thing of the past. Anyway, we go meet Yes Man at the Lucky 38 and we say we're ready to go to Hoover Dam. When we get to Hoover Dam, we are just unstoppable as not only do we have a Mark II Securitron, but we hit the enemy hard and fast and they can't stop our relentless onslaught against them. So when we close the gap, the enemy just can't stand up to us as we knock them down and just go ham on them. It lets us dominate the battlefield no problem as they are just run through and taken out as the NCR back us up from the rear flank. Once the first half of the bridge is cleared, it's time to go into Hoover Dam itself. We take out the NCR heavy troopers as if they were made of paper. Really not that difficult as they fall over, so we upload the overdrive module to the dam, seeing Yes Man once more, and we go through the halls, mind now own business, and get into the generator switch that destroys the generators of Hoover Dam. So the NCR have no reason to hold this position anymore, so like Law Limburger's character, we run away from the carnage. We get to the second part of the bridge, and it's actually quite a nice display. We get a lot of securitons just bathing the area in lasers as our melee hits the centurions in the face. So all good they've really had it coming after all then we get the finale the legates camp the legate is very straightforward so as we charge in and go head to head with the praetorians we've got superior gear and a better weapon that knocks them down with ease without too much to worry about it's not long before we reach the legate and it's pretty much a guarantee we can win here since we have 100 speech but that's kind of the boring way to sell things, so we see what we can do with our martial skills against him. Now, to be fair, he is a scary opponent. However, we open up and knock him down, getting some good damage off and unlocking the melee hacker perk one at the most inconvenient time. But as we back off, we manage to knock everyone down fairly quickly, taking the Praetorians out. So now it's a one-on-one -on -one against the Legate, but it's quite comical as he becomes Benny Training Dummy Mark II because of Super Slam knocking him down like the silly Billy he is. So he gets taken out and we are serious as we refuse to talk to him whilst he's being beaten. This is not good as he has forgotten his manners. However, once the reinforcements are here, they are easily dealt with to the point that it's not even a fair fight for them. And they decide to shoot us and exploit our melee weakness it nearly kills us but we survived and killed them and his buddy decides to make us chase him i kind of feel sorry for the poor fellow but we do manage to chase him down and put him out of his misery but sorry sir you decided to join the ill-mannered legate i hear he dislikes tea and biscuits truly villainous words for sure so you had to go anyway after all the legion are done we have general oliver make an entrance and he is an absolute idiot because he gets the comical treatment because we have 100 speech so general oliver gets thrown off the dam and scream here's the clip for you all We then get the ending with Yes Man saying he's going to be the ruler of an independent New Vegas. Completing the challenge, ending the run, answering the question, can you beat Fallout New Vegas using Old Glory? And the answer is yes. Yes you can and it's one brutal challenge. Okay, that challenge, 
for the first half and the second half was night and day. I've never done low some road before, but it was brutal and arguably the most brutal challenge on the channel thus far, as we couldn't attack during all of Lonesome Road unless you count the laser detonator, but that's required to get through Lonesome Road and can only be used on Warhead. So very limited and very difficult. But when Old Glory is finally obtained, oh my god this run became one of the easiest i've ever done so i didn't need to worry too much about the legget and could take him one-on-one -on -one with no medicinal items also having arguably the best armor in the game also helps out a lot so this challenge was extremely difficult for the first half and the second it was just amazing like a cup of yorkshire gold also, this video has been released on Christmas, so Merry Christmas to you all. I hope you have an awesome festive season. I hope all of you enjoy this video, and it helps that little bit over the holidays. Uh, for the next video, I'll be doing Fallout 4 using only dog meat, nothing else, just dog meat. So we'll have a fluffy companion with us, and he'll be doing all the damage for us. So stay tuned for that, but I also want to say I'll be taking a week off until the new year. So the next video will be released just after in the January month. And yeah, with all that, thank you very much for watching. Have an excellent holiday season, you all. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. I'll see you in the next one. This is Insane Frame signing off. Happy New Year and Merry Christmas, everybody. Enjoy your days and your holidays. Bye-bye for now.